Okay, so we are here to try to give some clarifications about uh, uh, this second text. Uh, I open here the, the text that you have and uh, let's uh, enable uh, track changes so that we can comment uh, directly on the text. Okay, so uh, I will go through your questions. Uh, here on Slack, maybe I make it a bit larger so that you can read them. Okay, so um, the first question is from Marco. Uh, yes, um, it's commenting about this paragraph here when there is a, a difference of the text, uh, uh, say. Um, mentions a difference uh, between the case where the meme belongs to the same creator or belongs to a different one. Okay, uh, and actually, yes, uh, it's correct that the only difference is uh, uh, about uh, the visibility attribute. So, if uh, in, in both cases you can change the title, you can change the text content, you can change uh, the text attributes. Uh, but in the, while in the first case, if you are um, duplicating your own meme, uh, you can uh, modify it from private to public or vice versa. Uh, if you have a, a meme from a different creator, uh, if it was protected, the new one must be protected. If it was public, you can change it. So there is only one special case. When you are copying a protected meme, you cannot make, uh, uh, make it public, make the copy public. So it's the only uh, constraint. Also, the other constraint is that you cannot change, in both cases, you cannot change the image, the background image, basically because the, um, the, the different images have a different number of text fields. So it would be strange to change the image and then what do you do with the extra fields or what do you do with the missing fields? So we want to only uh, keep the same background image. Uh, the second question from Alessio is, is it mandatory to use the React routes inside the application? Uh, no, it's not mandatory. It's one tool that you may use if you want. Uh, if you want, please just specify what the different routes uh, are doing. But uh, you can also uh, implement the application without any routes. Of course, you will uh, work more with states. Uh, because at the end of the day, uh, routes are just one way of managing the state also. Okay. Um, one type of state, but uh, you are free to use uh, 0, 1, or 25 uh, routes as you prefer. Uh, David is asking whether it's uh, the, uh, mandatory to develop the project in the Git uh, repository that we assign to you with Classroom. Uh, no, the only mandatory th uh, thing is the submission procedure. So you must uh, submit it on, on this repository with the final tag. Uh, but uh, uh, you can develop uh, where you want. My suggestion, our suggestion, is try to uh, develop in stages, doing uh, many different commits, uh, and you can do those directly in that uh, repository. Or if you prefer, on another one, for us it's the same. You will only look uh, at the last one, okay, at the last version. Um, but uh, uh, you know, developing under Git is always easier because you can go back, you can stage your developments, and so on. Okay, so but this is just a suggestion. The only thing we care is that in that repository there should be one final commit uh, with the properly tagged. Hmm? Uh, there is an error at the beginning of page three from copy and paste. Yes, there is. Uh, where uh, we have uh, the list of surveys created by each of them. Uh, no, it's not the administrator; it will be the creators and the list of memes created by each of them. Thanks for noticing. Uh, Bianca is asking a difficult question because one of those that you can develop at edit. When a creator C1 copies the meme of a different creator C2, will the copy belong to C1 or to C2? Do we have to track if a meme is copied from another meme? Uh, I would say that the simplest interpretation is that if I copy your meme, the copy will be mine. Okay, so in this case, uh, 
the copy will belong uh, to C1, so to the one who actually did the copy and saved the copy. Okay, so we can also probably make it clear here in the text. Uh, create a meme. If the meme belongs to a different creator, make a copy. The copy will belong to the new creator. Okay. Uh, Marco, is it correct to define only three positions, top, center, and bottom, at the, uh, and then each image can enable one, two, or all of them? Or should we consider the fact that each image has to define its own allowed positions? Uh, I think that there are many different memes, uh, and uh, uh, each of them has some particular locations. So in some of them, we have the top, bottom, and the middle. In some of them, you have the left and right bottom. In, in some of them, you have uh, both, uh, uh, both text on the right and side, and so on. So uh, I think that constraining the position of the text uh, to some fixed location that are independent from the picture is wrong. Okay, uh, does not the, um, let you have the the, um, the effect that you want. Okay, uh, so basically, uh, like the the text says, uh, it says that uh, each image predefines the number of supported text fields, uh, one, two, or three. Okay, we put a limit to three and the position of such fields over the image okay so this position could be an absolute position in pixel a relative position but you should have the flexibility of saying that this meme uh, calls for uh, one text in the top left corner and the other in the bottom right and that other meme uh, calls from a different uh, set of positions okay so uh, the, the, the position of such fields uh, depends on the image okay the position predefines the number of supported fields and the position. So the position, if you read the sentence, is predefined with each image. So each image has that definition of the different positions, uh, which is different from different uh, different images. Okay. Um, so if we want to to be clear, uh, different images images. We position the text in different places. I will polish it uh, afterwards, but just to have a, a, a track of what we discussed. Okay. Then uh, Bexal or Bexul or whatever uh, is your nickname. Um, User type creator must authenticate with username and password. Once authenticated, the creator will write the list of public and protected memes. Okay. By selecting one of them. He will see all its properties. Furthermore, from this page, the creator may. Um, yeah, I think it's uh, a bit ambiguous because we can create a new meme, uh, copy a meme, and delete. So uh, this page is the uh, the list page. Hmm? Uh, it's not the detail of the meme, but it's the page where you see. Uh, it's uh, the list of public and protected memes. So uh, from the page with the list of memes, uh, it would be strange from inside a meme to be able to delete another one, for example, okay, or to copy another one. So the idea is that you have a list and then you have the possibility of copying and deleting uh, um, um, some of them and somewhere you have a button for creating new one okay then if you want you can replicate also the copy and the deletion from inside the meme but it's uh, some extra it's not required uh, Bianca is considered an error when you open the page with the public memes uh, an authentication error is printed in the console such as uh, blah 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 uh, no, it's not an error. It depends on how you do the uh, the authentication. So it's, perfe it's perfectly legitimate uh, that you can uh, respond with a 401, okay, uh, when uh, just for checking the authentication, okay. Uh, it's printed in the console, just in the in development mode uh, that will print all the um, uh, st error statuses from uh, HTTP. But it's uh, your choice, okay? So you are calling an API to check uh, whether you are authenticated or not, and uh, this API can reply with a 200 and then a, a payload uh, with a yes or no, 
for example, or reply with a, a 401 by saying, okay, you're not uh, currently authenticated and it's perfectly legal, as long as you catch this error or this status code, it's not really an error, it's a normal condition. Uh, you catch the status code in your uh, React application and uh, okay, you, you don't show the error to the user. If it goes to the console, uh, it's not a problem, as long as you are catching it also in your code. Um, okay, then Cristiano, do we have to check for duplicate memes in the same creator? Same background, same, background, uh, same text? Uh, no, there's no requirement for that. So if you are really fond of, of a meme, you can create 27 copies of the same. It's not a problem. There's no, you don't have, uh, you don't need to put any extra check uh, for that. Marta, uh, so I don't think there's nothing to, to write here because it's not required to do any checks. Marta, can we put all the memes templates into the directory inside the client side or instead of server side? Okay, no, you can, you can choose basically where you want to store them. Just remember that uh, we have a proxy. So if you are, uh, the easiest way would be to store the images in the client side in the React application. That's the easiest one because just uh, uh, will be included and uh, served directly by the, by the React uh, application. If you don't want to do that, you can of course store the images in the Express server in a static directory and uh, use the proxy that will be able to, to, uh, to let's say, fetch these uh, images from the server side and transparently uh, you can see them in the in the front end. Okay, uh, every time you call uh, an HTTP address that is not managed directly by React, this address will be automatically proxied. It will try to use the proxy and, and fetch the file. So you don't even need and you don't need to uh, to develop an API just for fetching the image. You can just point uh, to the address of the server directory. But I think it's extra work, so you can very easily um, put the images uh, uh, in the client side. Of course, uh, this is possible because we never have to add or delete images. So the server side doesn't really care about uh, or doesn't even need to manipulate these images. It only needs to know where they are, what is their address. So the solution that Marta suggests is the easiest one. Just put them into the directory on the client side. Uh, but you are basically free to store them where you want, okay? Fabiano has a list of questions. Can the synthesis above the image be set with CSS manipulations? Yes, of course, I think it's the only way to position them and change the font and so on with CSS. Uh, so you can define some styles uh, or can just apply some custom styles to the element. Uh, you can directly apply CSS properties to any to any React element. Hmm. Should the background images be stored on the server folder and passed through HTTP uh, GET? Uh, is the same as uh, what I replied to Marta. Is uh, you can you are free to store them where you want. Uh, the easiest one is the is on the client side, so you don't need an extra uh, GET for doing that. Is it okay to use the auto increment function of the database, or should we manually set primary keys? No, it's uh, you can you can use the auto increment. It's not a problem. Uh, there's no nothing against that. It's just a function <laughs> of the database that works uh, correctly. Okay, it's better also to let the database generate unique IDs uh, instead of trying to increment something yourself, which is always prone to um, to raise conditions uh, and so to having duplicate uh, numbers. Okay, so it's perfectly fine. Visualize the list of public memes uh, means that the user visualizes only the title or the image. Uh, yeah, it's uh, the idea is just to visualize the uh, the titles at least uh, when uh, when I wrote this sentence here, visualize the list of memes uh, or also here in the public memes uh, or public and, pro and protected uh, for but with list uh, I only had in mind the titles. Okay, titles or maybe if you want the title and the creator or just some some simple metadata, not all the memes. Hmm. Uh, 
or if but if you want of course you can visually enrich it so fabiano is suggesting to use some cards uh, for for showing maybe a, a small part of the meme you 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 of course you're free to do that but the minimum requirement is just having a list with the titles maybe the creators uh, of the memes you don't need to do anything let's say extra fancy um, just remember that if you are visualizing the meme in a in a smaller space, uh, you will have to do all the computation to rescale also the text. Hmm? So it may be uh, it may be complex, but if you want, you can do that. Uh, when I say list, I'm not uh, in saying the uh, HTML list item. Uh, it's any type of list. So if you want to use cards uh, instead of list elements, you're few, you're free to use those. Of course, it's no problem. Mm -hmm. um, the, the important part is that you can select one of them to see all the details and you can um, add, create, uh, copy and delete some, one of them. Okay, so these are the operations that you must do in that page. How you visualize this page as a list of names, as a list of icons or whatever, uh, it's up to you. Mm -hmm. It's free. Uh, should the database connection error be visualized by the end users? No, no. Uh, database errors should be handled by the application, and uh, the application may, if you want, uh, uh, print some generic errors or something is wrong, uh, but uh, the, the text of the database error should not be shown to the user because normally the user doesn't know what to do with that error message. Hmm? Uh, in our context, uh, um, we should not have any any database error, basically, uh, because uh, uh, SQLite doesn't have any connection problems and uh, the, our query should be debugged. So I don't expect any database errors to come up uh, um, during the normal behavior of the application. Can we use pieces of code from the big lab laboratories? Of course you can. It's your code, it's your work. You can share some code, you can use code from the labs uh, uh, when, where you find uh, say some parts that are useful, you can reuse them. There's nothing against that. Um, okay, then I find the last question for the moment is this Muhammad. I assume that the site already has a set of predefined background images, yes. Do you mean that the user can choose from a list of images and can't add a new one? Yes, that's it. Uh, it's not required that you provide the functionality to add a new background image. So if uh, you are preloading your application with five different backgrounds, uh, those are the only ones that are uh, supported by the application. Of course, in a real application, you would want to be able to manage uh, that list uh, of background images uh, and for each of them selecting the areas of text uh, or the areas where the text will appear, but uh, is not required in the um, in this exam here, in this text. So we only work with a fixed number of backgrounds, which is predefined at the beginning. You cannot delete those, you cannot add any one. Of course, if you want to implement it, you're free, but it's not required. Uh, also, the, the area of the text is predefined. Yes, every, you should have a way of representing that, okay? Every, um part of the pay, uh, every image has some specific uh, hotspots uh, where uh, where the image is is uh, is normally displayed okay so we had for example this image here from uh, uh, spongebob for example and in this example there were three areas in the top and the middle and the bottom or the, just the top of the bottom uh, every image has some special locations. If you have a different memes, uh, then maybe you have uh, the images uh, on the left and the right and so on. So when you are defining your um, background images for each of them, you must store in some way, represent in some way in the database, uh, the location where the text will go. First, how many text uh, um, elements you have, one or two or three, and where are their, their locations. And every image should have actually the, the image itself and this information about where to put the text. And again, this is predefined. So if you want, 
you could uh, also predefine two different memes uh, with the same image but different position of the text right uh, if you reuse the same background image twice uh, and we define different location for the text uh, of uh, of the, the two instances but they will be treated as uh, two different backgrounds they will be separate um, and bexal uh, can we show the full meme image already on the list then the detail pile add only the metadata yes you can yes you can you don't uh, you are you have a, um, a scaled down version of the meme uh, just be sure that you you also visualize it on the full size uh, page um, it's not too difficult because you just have to scale the scale the image it will be a bit more difficult to scale the text probably because the text size uh, should be you know, computed in a way that it, it fits in a in a smaller uh, square but uh, if you want uh, you can do that it's not a requirement the requirement is just having the list but if you want to show in the list already the, the preview basically the thumbnail the, the thumbnail uh, you can do that so the idea here is uh, the list of the public memes we can put a footnote here by saying that uh, uh, the title is required, uh, visualizing the th thumbnails, thumbnails is uh, allowed but not required. Right? Uh, Bianca, the project database must be implemented by the students and it must be preloaded with at least three creators. I have created at least three memes, each of them copy a meme from another user. How can we let you know that the meme is a copy of another meme? Uh, yeah, you're right. There's no way after a meme has been copied to, to see that is it came from a copy. You just write that in the documentation. That you created this as a copy and instead of creating that uh, uh, from scratch in any case when we correct the the, the project we will uh, tr try both uh, functionalities but just to have something already ready hmm? yeah there's no actually once it's created we are not uh, we are not tracking uh, the the old uh, the old author hmm? Stefano, in the initial database, we have to implement six rows or nine with three lines that are copying me. Well, let's, let's read again. Uh, in the database, uh, we have to preload at least three creators who create at least three memes each. Okay, so we have nine in total. Uh, one of them by copy a meme of another user, one of these three. Uh, so we have there, there are two separate issues one is uh, the number of background images so you should have at least uh, six background images uh, uh, two with one field two with two fields and two with uh, three fields and that's for the library let's say of, uh, of backgrounds and then you have three users and each every user will have three um, will have two new let's say memes and one which have been copied from the others Okay, so it's nine in total. Um, uh, the other copy, can we just put six lines and three copy from the client? Uh, so I'm not sure I'm understanding the second part of the, of the question from Stefano. So the first copy is not after a button copy, but already on the start. No, so imagine what, what, what we do, what we want to do basically when you're asking that uh, is uh, not give us an empty database. Okay, already start to use the application and create uh, those users and those memes uh, so that we can start navigating and seeing the application with already some, some data preloaded. Okay, uh, so you can actually create them and copy them using the interface and just uh, when you submit the database, the database we, we, the, the, the database will already contain information about these memes. Okay, so there's nothing special that you have to create. 
I hope uh, you I answered correct. I answered uh, to your question. Um, Giovanni, uh, from what I understood, if a creator C1 copies protected mean from C2, then the new one must be protected, right? What if C1 copies again this meme? At this point, uh, no, no, no. It will uh, at this point. Uh, uh, it will. Uh, if I have a, uh, one meme, I make a, pro a protected meme. I make a copy. This second one will be a different meme. So if the original author copies his own meme, he can do whatever he wants. If he copies the copy, well, that copy will belong to another user. So he will have the lim limitation of, uh, of of keeping it uh, protected. Okay. Once I, why can, once I make a copy, I am the new owner of the copy. And so if somebody wants to copy me, uh, it needs to observe uh, the, the, the visibility of my, of my copy. OK, so I don't remember that this copy came from C1. This copy is just one meme, and which is now, is now, uh, is now owned by C2. OK, so C1, if you want to copy this, you must respect the visibility set by C2. Uh, Martina, of course, you can make a copy of your own meme and then you can do whatever you want. Hmm? But the original one, the modified one. Uh, Martina, is there a limit of characters that can be entered in a text error for the meme? Uh, you can set one if you want. Hmm? If you want, uh, when you decide the position, the location of the different uh, uh, images the, here when you are setting the position if you want you can also set a limit on the size uh, you can set a limit on the size uh, as a fixed number so when i create the type of meme i set a limit or maybe you can uh, limit the size of the text while the user is writing the text Okay, so if I'm writing too much, because it depends on the meme, it depends on the space we have, it depends on the font, the, the length of the text we can do. So we can do some dynamic computation or static computation. None of this is required. Okay, you can put some limits if you want in a simpler way, just uh, let's put a hundred characters maximum for all text fields. That's it. Or uh, personalize that uh, by uh, background image or by in specific uh, um, specific meme that will take also into account uh, the text attributes. Hmm? So you can, uh, if you want, you can do that. Or the simplest way, you just let the user write what it wants, and then you put, uh, um, uh, you with the CSS, you cut the overflow text and say, okay, uh, the overflow will be not will not be shown the, uh, outside the, the size of the text that I that I decided. Hmm? So there are different ways of doing that. Um, okay. Martina, can I store the background image as an URL to the, in the database? Yes. Uh, URL from the local host, please, not from an external website. Okay. So the URL can you can store it, but the image should be hosted. Uh, on the React server or on the Express server, but still on localhost. Don't put a URL uh, to to an external website uh, because the image will change, may change, uh, or whatever. So we want our application to be self-contained. But when the application doesn't care because it will fetch that URL anyway, but please uh, uh, load the images locally from our server. So maybe we can write it. Uh, background images uh, uh, as a set of predefined background images. This set cannot be modified and must be stored locally or must be served by React or Express. Okay, so we are we are uh, detailing both questions in one place. So we can choose whether to serve them from the front end server or from the back end server. It's up to you, but they must be served here and not from an external website.
you see that compared to the first exam the second one is more requires you to work more um, on the front end because you will have more to work on the on the CSS on scaling on text attributes and so on position and uh, uh, less uh, on the it will be simpler probably in the back end the type of information is simpler to store compared to the, to the, first, to the first exam where the data to store were normally more complex but then the, the front end was quite simple because they were just uh, check boxes and text fields mm -hmm. so it's a different type uh, of application uh, the uh, we did we are not saying anything about uh, uh, the writing of the text of the meme okay so writing the text uh, I imagine normally you have a preview of your meme and you're writing some text uh, maybe in a text area in a text field besides the image okay if you want to be extremely really fancy you can imagine just enabling the user to write inside the image just clicking on the image and write directly on the meme but it's perfectly acceptable to have the meme the preview and the text area, text field and you write in the input field and the, the, the image will be updated possibly in real time uh, there's no details here how, how you organize the page for writing the text so you are free to to imagine the interface that that you like most Any other questions? And Lawrence is typing something. You may also speak for to all of you because <laughs> so Lorenzo is asking whether the user can choose the font size or each font family is automatically associated with a predefined size uh, there are no details about this the only um, the only requirement uh, is that you have at least two types of fonts say so of predefined size so basically you have uh, type 1 and type 2 they may be the same typeface of two different sizes sizes or they may be two different types typefaces uh, with the same size or with different sizes or, or what, what you want so mm, at least you should be able to have a choice of how the text will appear if you want to decouple the uh, typeface from the size, so having two different controls and having a list of typefaces and a list of uh, sizes, you can do that. It's not against because here we have at least as a requirement. So at least you should give me an option between two different types of text. If you are doing something more complete, you can do that. Uh, the simplification is that uh, uh, the style will apply to all the text in the meme. Okay, so you don't have the style to for if you have one top text and one bottom text, you cannot style them differently. So they are both white or both yellow or both bold and so on, uh, but you cannot have the first one in a style and the second one in a different style. And the usual, I think this is more or less the standard for memes because there's only one typeface across all the different texts. So this is a constraint.
okay so practically uh, i will ask you to wait until uh, tomorrow at least to have the final version of the text because i want to compare also with the comments of the other courses so that we can make a consistent set of corrections so i already uh, made some corrections here but maybe there are some others from the other courses or the other students that made different questions so that we can all, all uh, say agree on what we are requiring from the application so i expect uh, by tomorrow probably to be able to publish the, the final version and uh, that will contain all the these answers that we wrote together just remember the answer that i gave you and uh while not modifying the file it's, the, it's because uh, it, they are in your choices so they are part of your choices there's nothing required for many items so you can choose freely uh, how to implement them the text only uh, reports the the actual requirements the actual constraints that, the, that we will check all the rest is uh, is uh, design freedom okay so I'm not seeing any new questions, so I, I propose to close this uh, short uh, Q&A session. Uh, I imagine, I don't know, I imagine that there will be more, more the majority of people will uh, try to, to submit the first uh, exam, but we'll see tomorrow. And uh, you don't have to do anything special okay for deciding whether to submit the first or the second one you could uh, submit the first one and start working on the second you're not if you're not so sure about uh, how you did the first one but uh, i'll try to be reasonably fast on, on checking the first uh, exam but uh, fast doesn't mean uh, uh, a few days uh, means more something like 10 days because i have uh, 180 uh, different submissions more or less that i'm planning so it will take uh, several days uh, to be able to check all of them okay so i know it's unfortunate this is kind of overlap but uh, with this distance of uh, 15 days uh, between the exams it's uh, we, we didn't find any way to avoid this problem um, we will try to split the work uh, to give you some feedback sooner, but uh, it will take time. We have to download and test each of them. And sometimes debug it because there will be some problems. OK. So uh, I'm going to publish this video right away. And uh, if you need, you can keep asking questions here in this, uh, in this um, channel and I will try to reply as timely as possible. Okay, so goodbye to everybody.